Today I'm looking at a super small compact case. Hi, I'm Rodney Reynolds, and this is the Fantax Enthu Evolve ITX case. As you can see, the box is really nothing special, but it does have a couple of pictures of the product on it, plus features and specifications about it. It comes packaged between two pieces of styrofoam, and the case itself is in a plastic bag. There's two different versions of this case. There's one with the window, and without. Now, if you're thinking that this is exactly the same except a smaller version of the Evolve, you'd be wrong. In some cases it is, and in others it isn't. They have, well, gone a little bit on the affordable side with this particular case to keep the cost down. The main difference here is that a lot of the panels aren't so easy to remove. They are not aluminum, rather steel and plastic. That might disappoint some, but I thought I'd throw that out there so you know right at the beginning. So at the front here, you've got a panel. It has an LED on the bottom. This is a power LED. This panel pops right off like so. It has these steel mounts, which are very, very secure. But again, you've got a combination here of plastic and steel, not aluminum. Got large humongous dust filter and they include a massive 200 millimeter intake fan optionally you can install up to two 120 millimeter fans or two 140 millimeter fans as well at the front there's radiator options anywhere from 120 all the way up to 240. And since the front fan or fans will be intaking air, you'll need ventilation. That's not a problem. You have ventilation on either side as well as at the bottom. Now this is very convenient. They have the power button right at the top. At the top front is the reset button, two USB three ports, as well as the audio jacks. Also at the top, ventilation along each side. Now while we're up here, have a look at the build quality, quite good, but notice that there's a slight color difference between the painted steel and the plastic, and of course that's to be expected. There's a nice tinted window on the left side panel, but the right side panel is plain. At the top back of the case there's extra ventilation. Here's where you would install the motherboard's IO shield plate, and you can install optionally either one 120 millimeter or one 140 millimeter fan. Note the rails here for the screws to slide up and down if you need to adjust it. Alternatively, of course, you could put a radiator back here, extra ventilation here, and some extra ventilation also here. Speaking of ventilation, <laughs> they include two ventilated expansion slots, and at the bottom is where you would install a standard ATX power supply. As well, they include a removable dust filter for the power supplies intake fan. As well, you've got four thumb screws, two on each side panel, and each of these thumb screws comes with a rubber washer, and that's for a few reasons. The main one, though, is to prevent the thumb screw from damaging, you know, the panel, the paint on the panel. Also, it cuts down on vibrations. Now before I have a look on the inside of the case, let's go through the dimensions. It's 230 by 375 by 395 millimeters and it weighs in a pretty lightweight 5.4 kilograms. Now let me remove the left side panel. The right side panel comes off pretty much the same way. Does it pop? Does it hinge? No, it does not do anything revolutionary just like any other pretty much plain Jane case. Slide back and it comes off. Yes, I know. That is just a little bit disappointing. This case fits many ITX form factor motherboards. You can see that they have a large hole on the motherboard tray for the cooler's retention plate plus rubber grommeted holes to route the cables behind the motherboard tray. And there is 28 millimeters of space behind the motherboard tray and the right side panel. Get those cables out of the inside of the case and put them back there. It looks good. It will also increase airflow inside of the case. Now you're probably wondering, where do you install drives in this case? Well, trust me, there's provision for two three and a half inch drives or one two and a half inch drive, but you can get a two and a half inch or a three and a half inch bracket and mount another three and a half inch or two and a half inch drive at the top right here. Now, what's this? You might ask. Well, this is where the video card gets tucked away. They have a couple of thumb screws right here. And what it does is basically hide the power for the video card. That's pretty neat. On the bottom, they've got 
four rubber rests for the power supply to lodge on, and again, a little shroud right here covering all those messy leads. So what about video card length and cooler height? Well, it's pretty darn impressive. You can have a video card that is up to 330 millimeters in length and a cooler that is up to 200 millimeters high. As well, there's lots of ventilation here, and that's to allow the video cards fans to do their job and intake cool air. If they did not have ventilation right here, of course, it would block the video card fans. At the top of the case, optionally, you can install up to two 120 or two 140 millimeter fans, as well, radiators anywhere from 120 all the way up to a 280. How? Well, there's four screws two on the left side and two on the right side. You will need to remove those. And then this slides right out and you can mount the fence or radiator up here. Okay, so let's have a look behind the motherboard tray. Again, plenty of space back here to route the cables, all kinds of rubber grommeted holes. Now, here is where you would install the drives. You can install two three and a half inch drives at the bottom. They have two plastic drive rails. Just basically pop the drive in and then slide this right back into position like so. And they have a little bracket here for installing a two and a half inch drive. And like the three and a half inch drive bracket that you can use on the inside of the case, this one installs the same way. You just would have to, in this case, remove it, install the drive on it, and then go ahead and slide it back in. There are four rubber posts here. You need to kind of line it up and push it down. And you can actually install two and a half inch drives on these. So in fact, you can have a total of up to three two and a half inch drives in this case. And note the Velcro ties that they do include for organizing the cables. They have two of them, one here and another one at the very top. Now this drive cage at the bottom can actually be removed. Why would you want to remove it? Well, you know, people who want to do water cooling could fit a pump down here with the pump bracket nifty. So what about power supply length? Well, with the drive cage installed at the bottom, you can fit a power supply that's around 190 millimeters in length. That will give you some provision behind it and the drive cage to, you know, tuck those cables where you need to. If you remove the drive cage though, you can have a power supply. Well, that's around 320 millimeters in length. As for accessories, they include a quick installation guide and the bag that has four plastic cable ties, as well as regular screws and thumb screws. At the bottom of the case, they include four rather sticky rubber feet. So if you're putting the case on your desk, it will certainly securely stay in place. The feet are pretty tall. That's a good thing, especially if you're putting the case on a soft surface like carpet, because what it will do is allow the bottom power supply intake fan to do its job and intake cool air. Finally, have a listen to the stock cooling, which is one 200 millimeter intake fan at the front of the case. And I'll tell you right now, it is really quiet. So the big question here is, does the Evolve ITX live up to the Evolve? Well, yes and no. First of all, the Evolve, well, has all aluminum panels. It is quality from the top to the bottom. This is a cheaper, smaller version. It's an affordable option, really, that gives you all kinds of features, water cooling potential, and so on. Very impressive case, but it doesn't have the look and the feel and the functionality of the Evolve. That being said though, this is an impressive ITX case, one of the best on the market. Overall, this is a kick-ass product. Until next time, take care.